Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Arkham Horror, Elder Horror. God, I just automatically say Arkham Horror. <laughs> okay, so here we are, Elder Horror, playing the Eldritch One. Uh, I did a few mistakes last turn. One of the big ones is, you know, it's, it, you keep forgetting how much easier Eldritch Horror is than El and Arkham Horror. So in this one, when you have multiple characters, you don't spawn multiple mol monsters on gates, only on monster surges. So even though we're playing, you know, this thing here that says two gates, two monsters, we still only spawn one monster per gate. So it makes it a lot easier. So what we're going to do, we're going to get rid of this guy and this guy. And because these are the second monsters I drew, and we're gonna take the riot that we put in Shanghai and place it here, because that was the second monster I drew. So that's one little change. Another change is that this gate actually goes in Shanghai, not in Tokyo, because it is a Shanghai gate. So that's that. And I think that's most of the things. The thing is, uh, oh yeah, the bar key that we're no longer using is the one that delayed this investigator. So he is no longer delayed. More errors. When I was editing uh, and I did the shroud and the altar of fate, I didn't actually activate the back of them. So what happens is we each have to lose once, one of them I lost a sanity, the other one I lost a sanity and a health. So I'm just gonna eat that. So we'll lose one health. Actually, what is altar? What is this anyway? So we're gonna to choose to discard the altar. That saves us from a health and sanity loss. And then we lose one sanity for the other one. Nice. One more error. We ended up not needing to spend his railway tickets. I mean, his boat tickets, sorry. Cause he was actually on this spot. So when I did the calculation, I was thinking one, boat ticket to here, but there's actually a single boat line all the way down. So you only ever need to spend a boat ticket if you're going to that spot. So he gets that back. And finally, these three guys were all basically cursed by the last Mythos card. Uh, wherever I put that, what do I do with it? Here it is. So this basically said that you roll a die on, on a, a one or a two, you get cursed where you get a Bane condition. And three of our characters got Banes, those three down there. But someone pointed out to me in the comment section, hey, all those characters have a ton of, uh, you know, they've all got focus tokens and clues and all this kind of stuff. I'd re-roll and, you know, I don't know why I didn't think of that. So I'm gonna do that. So we're gonna start with, he's got one token, he's got one token, she's got two tokens. We're gonna try and get rid of those curse conditions right now. So. Starting with the, uh, whatever his name is, uh, you know, the, the detective guy. Anything but a one or a two. Still get a one, so he's still cursed, but we used his focus. And now the grave digger, he also has one focus. Anything but a one or a two, he gets a two. <laughs> and we have two rolls for the African shaman. She gets a two, that is what? What the fuck? and a four. So she gets a clue instead. So basically we lose this, we lose this, we lose this and we lose a corruption and we gain a clue. Still worth it doing, still worth doing. Uh, this is spent. She spent both of her focus tokens. Now we're back on track for the next turn. Let's get into it. This time, we need to be careful about what we're gonna be doing with our turn order because we completely screwed up our turn order last turn. I'm gonna make her the first player. And so she goes first and then we'll continue on. So she is going to, she's gonna take a rail ticket and then move here. Now, as much as I want Field to kill that monster, he's at one health too, so he has to take a rest action. So he's gonna move out and then do a rest. So he's going to move to here. And move to here where there's a city space. It gives him more options next turn. And then he's going to do a rest. Now, has he got any fancy resting things? I think he does. Yeah, he's got uh, this thing here. What's it called? Canopic Jar. When performing a rest action, the spirits of the dead whisper to you. Do a mind minus one. If you pass, flip this card. 
So first he does a rest action, which means he goes up to three sanity and two health. And then he does a mind test. Now his mind is three, minus one is two mind, and he has nothing to help him with that. Oh wait, what, what's this? You may roll one dice when resolving a mind test as part of a madness condition. Okay, so that's just two mind, and he is blessed. And he gets a four success, nice. Ooh, what is on the other side of this? I do not know. At first you believe you are dreaming, but then you realize that you could hear the voice of an alien trapped inside the canopic jar. It tells you the secrets of the cosmos and offers your salvation if you release it. Resolve the effect of your choice. Improve observation, then flip this card. Or you may spend two clues and advance the mystery by one, then discard this card. How many clues does he have? He has two clues. This is the mystery. Let's have a quick look at this mystery. If you gain an artifact, you may gain the grotesque artifact instead. At the end of the Mythos phase, you may spend clues equal to the investigator count and discard two spells and the grotesque statue artifact to solve this mystery. So this is weird. As far as I can tell, this will not work on the Dread Countenance because this does not require, you know, incremental souls like Elder Tokens. You have to, to solve it, you need to do something and that solves it in one go. So I'm pretty sure I can't solve this using this card which really sucks. So instead, we're gonna improve our observation. See, if it was like, you know, the previous one that says when you have three tokens on this card, then it's solved, we could. So we're gonna improve our investigation, which takes it to four. Time to trade that to someone else because he has full investigation now. Okay, so it's this guy's turn. The first thing he's gonna do is cast Blessing of Isis on this bloke here to get rid of his cursed condition. So Blessing of Isis is a law minus one. Now his law is very, very good. He's got four law plus he's got the professor. So basically the professor says, once per round you may add one success to a test result in resolving a spell. So we've already passed. We just want a second result. What's this other thing up here do? When you perform a rest action, you may attempt to repeat. Okay, we'll do that as well. He is gonna do a blessing, so he gets to roll four minus one, so that's three blessed dice. Yeah, blammo. So we get one, two, plus we get the automatic one, so that is three successes. So because he's, even though he just blessed this guy, because he's cursed, it just gets rid of the curse. And for his next action, he's gonna do a rest. He goes to four and to four. And now we also get to do this, which says, tablet shards. When you perform a rest action, you may attempt to piece together the tablet shards. Do a negative one observation test. He has an observation of three, so he's got two observation with that negative one, and he's got no help. But he is blessed. So that's two blessed dice. Come on, you blemo. Whoop, another, another win on a four. God, our rolling is just squeaking in. So what's that say in the back? Through the maze of metaphors and allegory, you begin to piece together a narrative that describes current events around the globe. Resolve one effect of your choice. Gain one clue, then flip this card. Or you may spend three clues to advance the mystery by one. And then, oh, well, we can't advance the mystery by one. It's the same as that other one. So we'll get a clue. Still, clues are good. Clues are very good. You blammo. Now it's this guy here. He definitely needs to do a rest action. So that's the first thing he's gonna do. So that's gonna go to six. And this is gonna to go to two. You know, uh, okay. Okay, so there's not much else he can do. He's gonna take a, another focus. What I did forget to do though, was this guy up here. I did have psychoanalyst, so when he did a rest, he gets an extra sanity. Okay, so now we have this guy here. He's going to take one of these, and what can he do? Nothing. 
Yeah, so he's going to use his action that allows him to discard up to two things from the reserve. It says, discard up to two cards from the reserve, then perform an additional action. I really should be doing that every single turn. I keep forgetting about it though. So what have we got here? Okay, so what he's going to do is he's going to, he can discard two cards, right? Discard up to two cards. So he's going to discard this card. Actually, before I do that, I just noticed that there's a really good thing here. Uh, private cure, I think it's called. Private care, it only costs two. When you gain this card, immediately cover all health and all sanity. So for this guy's go, instead of taking the focus token, he is going to do a trade action. So his trade is three plus one, is four. He is blessed. So he gets to roll four blessed die. And we need two successes. We get one, two sixes, that's two successes, which means that we go to full health, full sanity. So this goes to six, five, six, seven, and this goes to five. Actually, because we end up training this guy's turn and we used that you know, asset to get all his health back, the, and we took away his focus token, but it's actually we leave his focus token because his first action was a rest, which is obviously not needed. That also means that this gets discarded and another card gets drawn out. Now, what have you got here? So this is the new one that came out. Now it's this guy's go again. We want him to stay where he is. So the first thing he's gonna do is take a token. Then using his other ability, he's gonna discard two cards from the offer. He's gonna discard this one and yeah, I think he's just going to discard that one card. He doesn't have to discard two. Let's bring out another one. And he still has another action. And there's really nothing he can do because there is a monster on this space. He's got, he's already taken a focus token. He's got both his tickets. I guess all he can do is a trade. He's going to take Astral Travel and he's going to take this bloke as well. This is Henry Wilcox or whatever. Actually, he's just gonna take Henry. He's uh, gonna leave Astral Travel here. He's gonna take this bloke, Lorient. So he took that, did a trade. And that's the end of that. So we're starting in Shanghai. There is a zombie here. Now, if I remember right, these are pretty easy to kill. Let's have a look here. Okay, so it's a mind test for one. It's a minus one strength for two. Let's have a look at her. I don't think she has any weapons on her. Did she take a rest action? Because she's also got fresh fruit. I'm gonna to have to check that. I can't remember, but if she took a rest action, she actually can go up an extra health and sanity, which is awesome. She does have plus two combat from the ritual dagger. So she is actually gonna cast Mist of Relia to avoid this monster for now. During the encounter phase, you may test lore. If you pass, you may choose to encounter as if there's no monsters on your space. So her lore is four, plus she has five from Map of the Ley Lines, plus she has one from the Ritual Gallet Dagger. So she's three, four, five, six, and the Mist of Eliot has no negative. So it's six dice for one success, preferably two, I think we want. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, six, here we are. So that's one, two successes. Flip the card. Walking through the mist, hide your presence from watchful eyes. No additional effects. Perfect. And now we're gonna do the gate. Unknown Kadeth, okay. The castle of the Ancient Ones seems abandoned, save for a lone Shantak resting at the center of the Onyx Courtyard. An insidious whisper urges you to mount the bizarre steed and fly to some unknown cosmic destination. Oh, let's do it. Oh, I wanna do this. Mind minus one. Come on, take me into the nowhere, please. We should be able to do this, right? So, we have five mind, Six mind, six mind, and it is a mind minus one. So that's five mind. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, blammo. We get one success. That is all we need, luckily. 
You mount the Shantak, but do not heed the voice in your head. Instead, you return safely to earth. Close this gate. Once home, you recite a ward to silence the whispering voice. Do a law te- uh, Not law. I keep saying law because of Lord of the Rings. It's like arcane, I think, in Elder Korra. Okay, so we got on the magic horse, but we chose not to go through the astral plane into God knows where, so that's very disappointing. So now we have a law test. So her law, we've already done this already. It is six dice. Uh, no, it's not actually, because that's only for spells, right? So she has three, four, five. So that's five dice. And we get one, two successes. Okay, so we get to close the gate close this gate and then we do the test. And if we fail the test, we get a sanity and a discard a spell, but we didn't, so nothing happens. So that is gone. Now, lots of things happen here because she has Earth Speaks. When you close a gate during an otherworld encounter, gain two clues. And she also has, when you close a gate during an otherworld encounter, you may move to any space containing a clue or a gate. Okay, I'm going to move her to here. Just one, one down to that clue. Plus she also gets two clues. Oh, she's a clue beast. Uh, these two are actually spawns, not placed on her. So she doesn't gain those clues, they're spawns. Uh, where is 20? 20 is all the way around here somewhere, right? 18, 19, 20, there's a second clue on 20. I thought there was only one clue per space. It's supposed to be in Shanghai, what's this one? That one's supposed to be in Sydney. You know what? That's probably from when the cat <laughs> knocked everything over. Okay, so they were fixed up and so that's 20. And now we have nine or six or something. I think it's six. So over here, there's already something on six for some reason. That should be in San Francisco. San Francisco six. Wow, <laughs> a lot of errors. <laughs> okay, so those clues are spawned. Okay, this guy here, he is at a clue. So I guess we'll do a clue. He is on a city space. You investigate ties between the Order of the Rising Stars and the fish-like men of the sea. Do an observation test. He is blessed. He has an observation of five. Okay. So he has to do an observation test with five blessed. That should be easy, right? One, two, three, four, five. We get one, two, Three successes, so nothing fooling us. If you pass, you learn that they have been spotted searching for sunken ruins together. Gain this clue. Okay, that's it. So he gets that clue, yoink. Okay, so now we have this bloke. Now there is a monster here and we want to avoid it. Don't we have a way to avoid it? Yeah, so he also has Mists of Relia. So that is a law test or whatever. And he has a blessing and he has three, four law. Now he does have the professor, but I think we use that for the blessing. It's gonna be used once, once per round. So we can't use him again. So to long story short, he has four blessed to gain two successes. He gets one, two successes. So we know that that doesn't have any bad effect. It also means we can then avoid completely the monster. I forgot that there's different things on the back of each card. So when this guy rolled for his uh, Mr. Relier, he actually got a one. And in this particular case, one plus. Although you are hidden by darkness, you feel unnatural tendrils of fog wrapping around your body, lose one sanity. So he still loses a sanity even though he passed. And he's gonna choose 
to encounter the expedition. I think this is the first time I've done an expedition in this game. Heart of Africa, you consider your options. For gaining access to the legendary canyons of the people, resolve the pass effect to take the river into the canyon, or resolve the fail effect to approach through the jungle. Now, I think I would rather go by river, right? It's open, you've got air behind you, you can see what's happening on the side, and there's a clear exit. All you need to do is just follow the flow of the river and you can get out. So I'm gonna go river, which is the fail effect. Okay, fail. You try to follow an ancient map to an abandoned city in the canyon walls. Uh, what, is it the fail effect? Resolve the fail effect to approach through the jungle. Oh, through the jungle. The powerful current, the powerful current. Oh, that's so annoying. See, the, the bottom one was a, a law minus one, which is really good at. <laughs> Damn. He chose poorly. The powerful current threatens to pull you under. Do a strength minus one. Okay, so his strength is two, so he now has a strength of one. He does have a focus token. He does have plus strength here, but it's only for combat encounters. So that's it. So basically, we have one blessed dice to pass this. Oh, that's bollocks. Now the blessed dice is a 50-50. It's a, a, a four to six. So it's not a bad roll. We can make this. Come on, let's do it. Bam, gets it on a four. Nice blessing. Whew, God, that was lucky. Really screwed up. If you pass, you find a strained object waiting for you on the shore. Gain one artifact. Okay, but remember, we have the special thing going on here, which means we should be able to solve this pretty soon, next turn, with any luck. If you would gain an artifact, you may gain the grotesque statue artifact instead. At the end of the mythos phase, you may spend clues equal to the number of investigators and discard two spells and the grotesque statue to solve this mystery. Let's have a quick look here. For starters, we need to get the grotesque statue. This is the first artifact we've got all game. It doesn't seem like we're playing very well. When you gain this card from the deck, gain five clues. Wow. Once per round, you may spend one clue to prevent all sanity loss. Well, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. I was about to say, we didn't have enough clues, but now we do. Okay, so we're solving that mystery this turn. Now the top of this deck is the Himalayas. So this moves over here now. Now this bloke's down here in Buenos Aires. You are horrified to find several blasphemous sculptures on display at the university. Do a mind minus one check. His mind's pretty good at four and you may reroll one die during a mind test because of Moxie. Okay, and he's blessed. So that is four blessed. It's a minus one actually, so it's three blessed. One, two successes, nice. If you pass, you steal yourself and seek your fortune. Gain one task, unique assets. Ugh, God, I hate tasks. Actually, I read that wrong. This is another one of these edited in fixes. It's not the task. It was the other one from the Buenos Aires thing that he got. So he was chucked that task out. And instead, he gets a Henry Wilcox unique asset. The thing is, Henry Wilcox is already out. We've already got the Henry Wilcox unique asset. So what the hell happens then? I don't know what happens then, so I'm just gonna give him a clue. All right, now we have this guy. So he is going to fight this riot. Now the riot's quite interesting because it does say on the back, even though there's no uh, sanity loss, but there is a strength minus three, which is really bad because, you know, mobs are huge. But check this out. You may attempt to disperse the mob using a, I don't know, handshake. I forgot what that's called. Whatever, minus one. So all we need to do is pass a handshake minus one and we actually kill this monster. We only need a single success as well. This guy has four influence when you, nope. Oh, look at that. I forgot to activate this last turn. Gain one random weapon asset from the deck during a comet. I'll quickly do that as well and give it to that other dude. Here we are. 
That's the guy I traded, because I planned for this man. You may add one success to a test result when resolving a influence Oh, during an acquire asset action, that doesn't help. <laughs> okay, so basically that's it. We have four minus one is three and we are not blessed. That's three unblessed to beat this riot. Come on. Oh, damn it. Okay, let's, uh, let's roll the, uh, spend his focus. And roll again. Booyah, six, nice work. The right is killed. And now we are going to be doing the gate. You find yourself in an abandoned mine in Ithog, one of the moons of Yogoth. Somewhere in the distance, you can hear the distinct cries of Shoggoths. The sound terrifies you to your core and you fight the urge to flee. Do another mine minus three. So we already know what that is. That is four dice, uh, minus one, which is three. We need a success, please. Blam, we get two successes this time, nice. Rolling when, we, when it counts. You find abandoned equipment that can be used to return you home. Close this gate. Before you go, you search the area, do a observation minus one. Again, his observation is huge at, oh wait, what's going on here? His mind is three minus one. So actually, he has to roll two dice. Boo, still passes. And then his influence, then his observation is four minus one. Have I screwed up his entire turn? No, no, that's right, yeah. So the monster we did with influence, now it's observation, which is three minus one. So that's two dice and another success, beautiful. If you pass, you find a series of revelatory murals. Gain two clues. Wow, we are getting clues out the jacksy. Another two clues. And this gate is also closed. That's every gate on the board gone again. We, could have, we should have got a weapon during that last comet phase. So I'm just gonna grab a weapon, magical weapon. Not a particularly good one. Enchanted dagger, gain plus two. I was going to trade that to the other guy if it was a good weapon, but he's already got a plus two weapon, so we'll just keep it. Right, so I've just edited a bit of the turn. I always do an edit before I do the mythos phase, and there's a number of corrections. I'm going to sort of edit them into the video, so hopefully it won't be confusing, but you know, because then people won't go, whoa, what's going on? So I'm going to put the fixes into this video, starting with uh, this is spent. She spent both of her focus tokens. It is time for the mythos. Yoink. First we have an omen track movement, then we have a gate spawn, uh, then we have the comets, and we have a gate spawn. So the omen track is moving and it moves to a blue one which has an elder token on it. And this was a huge error in the last turn, I just only noticed. Basically we did the sanity drop from the old one so we had four sanity, went to three sanity, we put four sanity on the table. We did that on a comet. When it's not comets that activate it, it's the blue sigils in the omen track. So we kind of did this last turn, so we're not gonna do it this turn. There's also no gates on the board, so there's no uh, doom tokens. So now we're gonna do the comets. And we start with monsters on the game board. There is a monster on the game board. There's two monsters on the game board, actually. Well, there's three, but uh, only two of things. We have, first we have the zombie horde. And that says, or roll a die on a one or a two, advance the doom token. The one or a two, we don't want either of them. Okay, that's a pass. Now the zombie over here, it says, spawn the zombie horde epic monster on a space. I don't know how that works either because there's only, there's only one copy of each epic monster and it's already out. So I don't know what to do about that. I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna advance the doom by one. That's that, because there's only one epic monster and it's already out. So I figured just advance the doom, that'll sort that out. The ancient one sheet, doesn't actually have a comet effect. So 
forget about that. The Mythos card, there are no Mythos cards in play. And now Possessions, starting with the first player. Now, can't actually remember who the first player was. I think it was the African Shaman Queen here. Okay, so she has Altar of Fate, the Messenger, and that's it. So Altar of Fate, Test Law, then flip this card, and the Messenger is Roll a Die on a 1, flip this card. Okay, so we'll do the Altar first. She starts with 4, Unblessed, so, but she's also plus 1. So she's 5, that means she rolls 4 dice. Yeah, blammo. Oh, we get a success, only one. The altar on the back says, altering destiny takes a toll on the mind, lose one sanity. So she goes to three. Okay, and now we have the messenger, which is a single thing, anything but a one. We get a three, that's a fine. It's a one and a two, I believe, on a one flip this card. Okay, Finn has just the blessing. So we need to roll that. On a one or a two, we discard. So rolling a blessing, one or a two, we get a four. This guy here is nutso. So we're over this guy. He has one plus a blessing. So we'll do this one first. It is test law. His law is four. Blessed. He gets one success. The altered fragments of space and time that surround you threaten to shatter your mind, lose one sanity. Okay. He's down to two now. And now we need to roll for his blessing, which is anything but a one or a two. Oop, missed. Anything but a one or a two. You blammo, you get a five, nice. Okay, now we have this bloke. He has corruption and blessing. So what's corruption do? Gain one Eldritch token, then flip this card. You may gain a dark pack condition to discard all of your Eldritch tokens. A constant fog permeates your thoughts. Resolve each effect that applies to the base number of Eldritch tokens you have. One plus for each Eldritch token you have, discard one clue, one focus, or one resource. Uh, I'm just gonna discard a clue. And he gets a Eldritch token on that corruption. And now he has to roll for his blessing. Anything but a one or a two. He gets a four. Yes, we're so good with those blessing rolls. We haven't screwed up a single one all game. And finally, we have this bloke. He has just this guy here gain a weapon. So, <laughs> somewhere in here is a weapon. Here we are, boom, Colt 45 revolver. Once per round, you may gain plus three combat during an encounter. That's pretty good, bonk. Okay, and that's that. Right, now we spawn one monster because it is so forgiving. What you got for us? And it is... The Thrall. Oh, this is actually pretty nasty. Two mind for two, two health, two strength, two damage. If you lose sanity from the mind test, gain a corruption condition. Over here, bam. And finally we have old wounds. Each investigator may discard any number of improvement tokens. Then he loses one health and one sanity for each improvement token he has. <laughs> That's not good. Okay, so he's got one, two, three, four. So he's gonna lose four. He has three, so he's gonna lose two. Uh, was that five or four? I think it was five. She is going to lose two, takes her to three. He has to lose all three, yonk. And he is going to lose one. Okay, that is it, my friends. And, oh, wait. No, there's one more thing. One more very important thing, actually. Bam. 
At the end of the Missos phase, you may spend clues equal to the number of investigators and discard two spells and the grotesque statue artifact to solve this mystery. So we have six players. So that is one, two, three, four, five. We get to use his ability, which says, once you're around, oh, spend one sanity instead of spending a clue. So we're not gonna spend a sanity, so that's six. So we've spent six clues. We spend the grotesque statue, wherever I put that, here we are. Spend the grotesque statue, and we'll spend flesh ward, and Mist of Liar. So there is the statue and the two spells. And that is now solved, your blammo. So we've solved two of these. And next one up, we only need to solve three to win. The Order of the Rising Stars. All across the globe, a new organization rises from the ashes of its predecessors. Their goal is unclear but they appear to be consolidating power in preparation for some unknown event of immense importance. After you resolve a research encounter, you may spend one clue gained from that encounter and place that clue on this card. At the end of the Mythos phase, if there are clues on the card equal to the number of investigators, solve the mystery. Well, <laughs> could that have been a better one to get? Look at this. The board is absolutely chock full of clues. There's a clue here, so that's one clue, two clues. This guy can get a clue. Hmm, so he can get a clue. So the only person who can't get a clue next turn, assuming we roll well, is this bloke here. And we'll see if there's a way around that. She's got it, she's over a clue as well. So, we could finish this game in two turns if everything goes to plan. And I'll see you guys next time.